Hey and welcome back. This is not the lockpicking lawyer, but today we will be talking about keys. Or I guess keyways, I'm sure they're related. So let's start off with something relatively easy. What we have here are two identical gears, identical in every single way possible, except for the material, the number of teeth, and the bore size, and the thickness. So yeah, as I said, two completely different gears. The biggest difference though is the one on the left is an idler gear, whilst the one on the right is a key gear. That square notch in the bore is for a key. As you can probably imagine, if we put the idler gear on a shaft and spin it, or I guess apply a torque to it, it's simply going to spin freely on the shaft. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, you know if we're trying to connect one gear to another in a gear train, maybe to change the direction of rotation for example, a gear like this is going to be pretty well suited. All it really needs to do is spin freely on the shaft or the pin. However, the second we need to actually transmit torque and drive the shaft that it's connected to, the common go-to is to simply add a key and a keyway to the shaft and gear. Now the easiest way to do this is to simply buy gears with a keyway already made. It works for me every single time. However, sometimes I do need to make my own keyways, and there are a few other methods which I've used including using a parting blade in the lathe as a sort of shaper to remove small amounts of material over many passes. However, it's not a particularly fast method and my old lathe did struggle to do this. As a result, my go-to was to simply hand fold them and the results were, I guess, mixed. They do work, but the fit is not as tight as I would like and there is a fair amount of backlash in the system. But now that I have a press, I can now finally broach them is what I would say except for two issues. One, my 3mm brooch has yet to show up, and two, a commercial 5mm brooch, which I need for an upcoming project, is too tall for this press. Thankfully though, the solution is quite simple. One, I simply wait for my brooch to arrive, and two, we make a custom 5mm keyway brooch. At least hopefully, I couldn't find a whole lot of info on specifically making keyway brooches, but they're probably not too different from any other cutting tool that I've made before, so I guess as long as we get the cutting geometry right for the tooth, we should be okay. So what I have here is some 5mm O1 tool steel, and this should be okay to make a brooch out of. O1 being that it's an oil quenching steel, so we should hopefully get less distortion, or at least less risk of distortion, than if we were quenching it in water. Now before we start machining it, I am going to make a small jig out of a piece of aluminium so we can hopefully hold it and accurately space the holes. So the first thing we need to do is get the part squared and cleaned up. I'll now drill a step down for the brooch to seat in. I'll then get two holes drilled and tapped for the clamps. Now the end mill doesn't leave a perfect 90 degree corner, so I'll relieve it with a hacksaw. With that done, let's get the brooch made. So I've tilted the brooch up at just under a 1 degree angle and I'll machine it down to the correct height. And this steel may be annealed, but this stuff is pretty tough to machine. And with that done, let's get the teeth cut. 
And given how hard I had to push the high speed steel, for the teeth I'm going to switch over to a carbide end mill. I've also rotated the vise about 30-35 degrees to form the tooth. With everything now clamped up, I'm going to make the first cut. With the first tooth now formed, I'll move over, leaving about 4mm for the tooth itself, and then I'll make a second cut. With the two teeth now formed, this will now be the final spacing for all of the teeth in the brooch. I'll now go back to the first tooth and I'll drill downwards to form a hole in the jig. I can then fit a pin in that hole and then keep it in place with some Loctite. All we have to do now is move the brooch over and we can now use the pin to set up the next cut. And if I do that enough times, I should end up with 14 or so teeth. It's a little bit less than a normal brooch, but it's still more than enough to get the job done. We need to machine in the clearance behind the teeth, and that'll prevent the back of them from rubbing up against the work. So I'll hold the brooch at an 11 degree angle, and I'll remove the material behind the cutting edge, making sure not to take out any of the cutting edge itself. And because it was a bit difficult to tell exactly what I was cutting, I used some marker on the teeth to show me exactly what I had and hadn't taken off. And that's our brooch machined. If it's a little bit difficult to tell exactly what I have and haven't done, I don't exactly blame you. The angles are very subtle and even I got confused at times. So the important thing is, the back edge is square and flat to the work. The front edge is canted outwards and it's about 1mm larger at the top than it is at the bottom. This means that each tooth will take a bit more material than the previous one as we press it into the work. And speaking of which, the teeth turned out great. They're a bit more basic in shape than a commercial brooch, but I think the correct cutting geometry in order to make a cut is there. Plus it's a lot wider than a normal brooch, owing to the job that I have it for, so there's going to be a far less risk of it breaking in half as it gets pushed into the workpiece. That is definitely a real risk with a normal push brooch, and owing to the fact that these things are easily 100 bucks plus, the last thing I want is for me to break one. There are a few other differences compared to a normal brooch, but for what I need, at least in the grand scheme of things, it's not really worth worrying about. What we do need to do though, is get the part hardened. Now recently I've been using a borax flux to protect the part from oxidizing in the furnace, but as a bit of an experiment, I'm going to use some clay. I've used this clay in the case hardening boxes and it has worked fine, so fingers crossed it works here. The logic here being that it should be a little bit easier to remove afterwards than the flux. Unfortunately though, I don't think the clay did a particularly great job at protecting the part. I think I was a bit impatient with the drying process and it cracked as the part warmed up. 
So what I'm using here is a cup grinding wheel and that should hopefully bring up the surface finish. Now whilst the part turned out great, it did remove a little bit of material off the sides, so I will need to grind the keys to match. Now normally you would leave some extra material to finish grind it into its final dimension, but since I started off with 5mm steel, I didn't exactly have any leeway to grind it. So unfortunately, that's on me. Apart from that though, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. The final thing I need to do before I can use it though, is make up an alignment bushing. Now the bushing needs a good fitting slot on the keyway, but it seems that the flutes just aren't long enough for the job. So what I'll do is I'll take it over to the lathe and I'll reduce the shank using a carbide insert. I've had to do this a few times in the past and it's not great for the end mill, but it does seem to work. And that's our brooch and bushing done. And that's a pretty good fit between the two parts, which is really what you'd want. Nothing else left to do, but see if it works. For anyone wondering, there is a hole in the stand for the brooches to go, and there are some towels on the bottom in case I don't catch it. And that brooch is going in really easily, which is a really good sign. Now the first pass doesn't take it to its full depth, so I'll add a shim to the back for pass number two. And it's safe to say that my choice of shim stock could have been a little bit better. And I might as well do it one more time to make sure that everything is fully cut. And that is our first keyway cut. We got a really clean cut and I'm really happy with the results. Of course it was in aluminium, but so far that is a good sign. I do think I slightly ground too much off the key, but it's a nice sliding fit, which can be good in some applications. And I think those are some really nice looking chips. The real test though is going to be testing this in steel, and that's going to be a test for both the brooch and my press. Now normally for a 5mm brooch, I think you'd want a 4 or 5 ton arbor press, or probably even better, a hydraulic press. So fingers crossed, my press can do this. And it's definitely a lot more force than it was before, but the press is very easily handling it.
And to my relief, there doesn't seem to be much flex, if any, in the brooch itself. The last thing I want is to snap this in half and have to restart it from the beginning. And those are some pretty nice looking chips too. And that is our 5mm keyway cut in steel. Overall, I'm really impressed by the press and I am really happy with the key. I'm sure there are ways of further optimising the cutting geometry for better performance, but so far I'm really happy with the brooch and I think it can do its job for the moment. Overall, I'm pretty happy. For a homemade jig and having never made one of these before, I'm pretty impressed by the results. Is it better than a commercial tap? Probably not, save for the fact that it is wider and it's less likely to shatter, but hey, at least it fits in my press and it does work. Now to see what this is being used for, well, we're going to have to wait till next week. So until then, stay safe. See you next week. Thanks for watching.